Sachs. I'm Farah Sachs. Joining me today is Chris Mancini and Evelyn Santos. They are the creators of the documentary, The Poison Garden. Wow, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is um, a heavy topic. It's an unbelievable amount of countless hours of events that you've put together. Just in a few words before we get started, because I want the, our audience to see the trailer. What is this about, The Poison Garden? Well, it's basically the story of South Florida back in the 30s. Uh, and we talk about how the society was back then that it still has the stains that's happening today. So we talk about three life stories. Uh, this is not just a fiction, but something that really happened back then. Um, the injustice that happened back then and how that all that happened how much is still happening today um, you know, in society. So uh, it's, it's a documentary. Um, we talk about all, all the um, elements that it's still happening in Florida today. So, so Chris, are we talking about racism? Are we talking about mm -hmm. good and evil? Well, you know, the macro version of what we're talking about are the main issues that we're facing today all over the country. The, the divisiveness, uh, the issues of white supremacy, the things that are still ongoing. And then the focus from the bigger picture comes down to the particular history of South Florida. We, unfortunately, uh, lead the United States and America in convicting innocent black men of color of murder and other crimes that they did not commit. And if you don't understand how shocking that is, because South Florida is ruled by our image as being a tourist uh, a capital, a place that people can come to. An inclusive feeling. All right, mm -hmm. and the promotional work that the Chambers of Commerce and our leadership generally undertake is deliberately aimed at not bringing up these unfortunate truths about our past, and as Evelyn just said, how they continue to reverberate to today. So there's the image that we put out, and then this unfortunately ugly history that still continues. And so the, the, uh, the whole purpose of the Poison Garden is to bring together a coalition of people in South Florida to recognize the fact that we have not dealt with these problems since the 1930s, that the way South Florida is organized, we all live in our silos connected by a series of roads. And until the people that are most influenced and most affected by this get together and, and say, enough is enough, we need to do something about these things. Nothing has changed since the 30s. Well, some things have gotten better, but the things that have not changed since the 30s will not change until the community gets together and says, we can do better. We can be better. So, so we're setting up the shot right now for to hear the trailer, but to watch the trailer, so it is basically, this has been a staged production that you filmed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you, now you're distributing, and uh, you, you have your launch next week in Aventura, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. But I think it'd be great to, right now, just let's roll video and, and watch The Poison Garden. I ain't touch her. She was scared, that's all. Please don't shoot me. Please, I ain't done nothing. It has been shocking and awful to watch over the past five decades, where black people were literally kept on the other side of the tracks. 50 years ago, this was a very different place. Did he have intercourse with you? He raped me. He did all the dirty work he wanted to do without any guessing. This was a small, backwater, mean, racist town. Come here, nigga. Stop running. Hey, you, boy. We need him to confess. Where black people were literally kept on the other side of the tracks. In view of your freely made guilty plea, I hereby sentence you all to death in the electric chair. What? We never do now. It took only 30 minutes for an all-white jury to return with a verdict of guilty. guilty. Never mind that there was never any evidence against Isaiah or the other three boys except their confessions. I remember when Judge Susan O'Connor in the Broward County Jail said, we, the people, hereby 
sentenced you to die by lethal injection. I teach students about the history of racial discrimination by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was my hero for years. I can teach it at Harvard. I could not teach the course that I teach today here in the state of Florida based on the Woke Act. This is wrong, and we do need to teach of the history of what's taking place. If we want to reach the masses, we have to use our existing school systems, public schools, and public universities. I'm so glad to see this production because it does bring out some of the injustice and some of the things that many people may not have known about. This is just the beginning. Yes, it is. <laughs> so this is based on three different events. Let's, let's work our audience into mm -hmm. what, they're, will, that what they will witness, what they will experience at the Poison Garden. Okay, so um, three events that happened, 33, 34, and 35. Uh, started, we started with uh, the story of the Little Scottsboro Boys. They were uh, four um, African Americans uh, that were uh, executed, they were uh, tortured, you know, to get confessions and um, going to electric chair, you know, things like that. And the other one back in 1934 uh, was Walter Doc Williams, who was executed at the electric chair um, based on a false accusation that he raped a white woman. Uh, in 20 days, you know, the trial, I mean, in 20 days, he was executed by a mob. Uh, and then in 1935, the story of Reuben Stacy. Uh, that was lynched back in 1935 in Davie, uh, which, you know, Davie Boulevard that we go through now. Um, and so those three events... Um, he was lynched by the sheriff. was lynched by the sheriff of Broward County. Broward County. Sheriff lynched him. Yes. So, you know, back then it was, uh, it was a society uh, that was really, really trying to control a black community. Um, and when, when we're talking about, you know, South Florida being a tourist, you know, paradise, so everybody was coming here to enjoy the sun, but a lot of those things were happening just to keep a community, you know, under, under, you know, sort of certain kind of control. So we talk about that, that we know that even though today we don't have lynchings, we don't have electric share, but we have different kinds of ways of keeping the community in a way being persecuted, being oppressed. Uh, so that's basically what we were talking about, you know, those, those three events that happened back then in the 30s, are they are still happening today. You know, uh, Governor, San Governor DeSantis just pushed through the legislature a change in the number of jurors that are required to vote for the death penalty by lowering it to eight. And aside from the constitutionality of that, one of the people that you just saw in the trailer, Herman Lindsay, spent nine years on death row for a murder that he did not commit. He was uh, actually exonerated by unanimous decision of the Florida Supreme Court. But had DeSantis's new law been in effect when Herman Lindsay went to trial and was convicted, he'd be dead now. And when he gets up in front of the audience and he says what he says about when Susan, uh, I can't remember the name of the judge right now, said, uh, you are hereby condemned to death in the electric chair, he goes on to explain what that meant to be sitting in Rayford in the death house for nine years, waiting for them to come and take him. And um, it's just an incredible story. And believe me, by, he is by no means alone. Florida has led the nation in convicting people of color for murders and other crimes that they did not commit. And specifically, South Florida has been the leader of the entire state in that regard. And there's reasons for and you, Chris, have you have a legal background. Mm. So, what does that do to you, as you know, in, in your what you've learned as a litigator, and then you as a humanitarian? And where does that jive for you? And where do you see the inequity? The the it's not equal. It, it, there's not a checks and balances from the history of what you saw to what you you know what you were practicing law. Mm -hmm. to now, to this. Well, I had the privilege of coming down with the mayor of Boatlift from being a public defender in Wisconsin 
then I was hired to become an assistant United States attorney. So I started out at the apex, if you will, of the federal justice system. When I left, after having done many civil rights, criminal civil rights prosecutions and other things, I began to understand that the federal system is extremely different than the state system in Florida. And the state, the state system has traditionally, as the introduction to the movie says, been riddled with the prejudices and the racism of the past, much, much more so than the federal system. And it was a shock for me personally to go from you know, a place where we attempted to enforce the 14th Amendment's right to due process and equal protection to a place where those things didn't seem to exist. I stepped into the Broward County Court System to listen to the state attorney, Mike Satz, get up and say once, racism is not a crime, and therefore we do not consider it when we investigate cases of police brutality. And I'm looking around going, did you people ever hear of the United States Constitution? I mean, that, that was the elected state attorney saying that to the population of Broward County. And he got away with that because Broward County is so siloed in the way in which it approaches its elections. 4% of the electorate turn out for non-presidential elections. And all he ever had to do was appeal to that small minority of people that were afraid, that lived in their homes and voted based upon their fears and, and never really bothered to examine what happened to people that weren't of the same color or didn't come from the same background. And that's how this went on for 46 years while Mike Sass was state attorney. Then when he finally stepped down, for the first time we have a, a black elected state attorney, but he's finding himself siloed by Governor DeSantis, who removed uh, the state attorney from Tampa, Andy Warren, because he said he was not gonna enforce DeSantis's policies regarding prosecutions for abortion and some other things. Boom, the next thing you know, he was out of office. And there were two other uh, state's attorneys that DeSantis has done that to. The result is that we have these politicians, black, white, doesn't matter, they're stuck in their silos. They can't bring up these issues for fear that that will end up in them being removed from office or that there will be some other form of backlash. And so we're not going anywhere. We're just continuing to go on the same path. And if you can apply that for the past 80 years, you understand my personal frustration, and to answer your question, when I came out of the US Attorney's Office and got immersed in the state system, my personal frustration that these things would go on every day. They weren't even being talked about. Mm. So how do you make peace with that? You make a film. You make a movie. You make a movie. You make a movie. Right. you make a movie looking for an audience that would open their eyes. So who is your audience? The influencers, yeah. the people out there that care. We're not trying to reach everybody. You can't. I mean, we, uh, you, this country is so polarized. Read the news. But this is a local problem, which repeats itself throughout the country. But to deal with it, you have to deal with it locally. And so who we're looking for are the stakeholders, the people that care for one reason or another, and there are a million reasons, that justice is, is administered as fairly as it can be. And they don't know what to do about that because they're stuck in their silos, right? If some artist was to draw an accurate depiction of South Florida, it would honestly look like a bunch of silos named South Miami and <laughs> Coral Gables and, you know, and what connects it is nothing more than a series of roads. Mm. And I've seen this personally, up front, over and over again. That theme repeated itself since I arrived with the boat lift to, to go into the US Attorney's Office. So how do you merge these silos? How do you get people to step together? We have to have something of common interest. And the only thing I can say to people is, if someone that you love doesn't matter what color they are, finds themselves in this criminal justice system, you're gonna have a rude awakening too late to the problems of the system. But if you get together and decide to provide some form of political protection to these politicians against the likes of Governor DeSantis's Stop Woke Act and his tampering with the criminal justice system. And by the way, we're seeing that now on a national level. All, what happens in Florida is being repeated now in Tennessee 
and Arkansas and Kentucky and states around the country where they're starting to pass laws that interfere with the decision making of the elected state's attorneys and district attorneys based upon the politics of the predominant uh, uh, pub political party, which is usually Republican. And we're starting to see this disease spread throughout the country. So the question is going to become, do we want to admit face up to this? Do we want to do something about this? If we don't do something here, then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And we're seeing that all every day. I pick up the newspaper, repeat itself. Because South Florida is very often the incubator for these things, these anti-democratic actions. And people don't even realize it. You, and it's interesting in the film, uh, I, you know, in your trailer, you actually have people that were affected by these crimes, these mm. events. Mm -hmm. What was that like working? You were, one of them was the niece of Ruby. Mm. What was that like, Evelyn? Well, it was it was very interesting. First of all, when we had the opportunity to meet the family, and then um, you know to have their uh, testimonies, you know how how it was, especially from her. Uh, how it was living during those days and, and the effect that it had in the family because they have to spread out, you know. You can you imagine after a situation like that, you they know, fled. they fled. They had to go to Chicago. They had to go to other states because being, you know, that fear that we're talking about. So, um, and when we had opportunity to talk to the family, we realized a number of other things that we could put in the movie. Um, and it's very sad, you know, and, and that was the, what really um, increased our passion to tell the truth. So the purpose of the Poison Garden is really to bring this awareness to everybody, you know, whoever watches, especially the influences, of course, um, but as, as a wake-up call. Um, you know, this can be a tool for people to understand how important it is to know your history. How is important to know, to get together, and we together as a community, what can we do to open up our eyes, everybody else's, because influences everything that we do in our daily lives. Um, is impo the importance of voting, the importance. Some people say, I'm not, not so, I don't like politics. You know, I'm, myself, I wasn't so into that before we started the project. Uh, but how much that influence our daily life, you know, somebody can come to you and dictate who you're going to talk to, who you're going to have a relationship with, what kind of book you can read, what kind of color of your clothes you're going to wear, you know, the, the way things are going. So the, the project has this, um, this, this tool to bring this awareness, to open in the eyes of the public in general, uh, so we can reform this, you know, so we can get better. Because we can. You know, one, just to pick up on what you asked, Ann Naves, who was Reuben Stacy's niece, was living with him when he died. And one of the things that she told us that's always stuck with me was the way Ann said, the thing that hurt the worst was the idea that her uncle, who they knew, they loved, he was a great guy, would go out and attack a white woman. Mm -hmm. It was completely against his character to do something like that. And it ripped their family apart and totally. cause them to flee. The truth is, which we make crystal clear in the movie based upon the research and everything that we've done, is that Reuben Stacy didn't attack this woman. This was not about that. This was about the influence of the Bahamian um, Importation Act and the Mexican Deportation Act and the various problems that led up to Reuben uh, Stacy's lynching, which dealt with the economics and the politics of the time. That's why Reuben Stacy was lynched. And the whole story about him attacking a white woman was made up to justify that lynching. Mm -hmm. Now, that's hard to swallow, but it's true. I can digress about that all I want. I don't need to yeah. go up to that. But that was Ruth, same, That was Anne's, you know, yes, she just, same, they, yeah. at a very human level, mm -hmm. the whole idea that her uncle would do something like that. That's the human, human Right. touch of this. Touch. This, is, the, this right. is their reality. We right. see the end product of, of the criminal system serving mm -hmm. or not serving well, and then we see the families that are affected by that. And, exactly. I, think, exactly. and I think that's really the really important key in, in this conversation. And so when we talk about the fabric of this production, and you guys co-produced it, you wrote it, you directed <laughs> it, you filmed it, you ate it, you slept it, and you lived it. Mm -hmm. What was that process like? as a filmmaker now, 
documentarian. What, what is that like? Yeah. A lot of late nights. Yeah, very well, they're, late they're, nights. I found out off camera, I have to ask like politely, are you guys like a couple? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so, so they're a husband and wife dynamic duo, as they call yes. themselves. <laughs> so what was that like, and how long was this process? Well, we started it, well, Chris initiated it back, what, four years ago, five, five years, six ago. years ago? Six started. years ago. Uh, and we're doing it. Put it out and then you know, was taking a look at it and said, well, we're thinking we're going to do this. I think I want to write a book about it. And then said, well, what about a play? Yeah, a play would be fantastic. But and this is this is in your wheelhouse. You both like this. You like the, oh, the, the, yes. the crime history, mm-hmm. yeah. or, you know, the history of that part of your lives as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, Chris, because of all his background, right? And me, because I like I like history, and um, as you can notice, I have an accent, so I'm, I'm from Brazil. Like, She's from Brazil, everybody. Yes, uh, and I moved here, what, 24 years ago, something like that. And, you know, I always had this passion about America. I want to go to America, I live in New York City. So, you know, I was city and everything that the America has to offer. And then little by little, you know, I started to see one thing here, one thing there. It's like, hmm. Interesting. So Chris brought me the, the history part a little deeper, you know, to understand. And living in Florida, like I said before, it was about the sunshine, but it's not so sunshine as we think it is. So we start, you know, talking a little bit more about it. And to be honest with you, it took me about four months to put myself into that position. Okay, we're going to do this because I was crying most of the time. Because I had to do research, you know, you go to a book, you go to the library, and then the more that you understand how the process goes, I was devastated. It was just like, but we need to talk about this. So how long did, so you did the research, and how long did it take to write the script? And I'm sure you've had revisions, because that's what usually well, happens with plays. Every day we had a, like, well, edit, edit two, again. there's, embedded in the Poison Garden is the true story based upon the transcripts and the court files of Walter Doc Williams. And Walter Doc Williams is kind of our cause. Uh, we want to see the Florida legislature exonerate him just as they did the Groveland Four, which was a rare event in Florida. And there's been a lot of talk about the fact that it only happened because Nikki Freed was promoting it. And at the time she was running for governor against DeSantis. So he wanted to steal her thunder. And then for that reason alone, that passed. But Walter's story comes directly out of the uh, archives of the Dade County Clerk's Office. The transcript was there. And the entire trial is recreated in a short version, because you can't do a two-day trial in 30 minutes. But the short, uh, in a truncated version, but everything that's on the screen is accurate, comes right out of the transcripts of the trial. So you, you hired actors, right? Mm-hmm. And they were local actors, yes. local actors, yeah. And you just basically did like all kinds of shots. Well, One actually, shot, uh, reaction well, shots. We you, just, don't tell me you got behind the camera too. Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> but that's most of the time. Well, it's a we labor of to. love. No, yes, mm-hmm. but uh, we when we started doing the rehearsals. Um, of course, that was the whole process. We're going to do this, we're going to do like that, come this way, come the other way. We have rehearsals in different places. Um, and then when we put it on to everybody together on stage uh, in Pompano at the theater. No, for filming the film. The filming, yeah. Uh, it was like, it was such an experience. It was really an experience. Uh, then we can see that to life, you know, all everything that we put on a paper. And, and hearing it, and it was, it's, it's still to me, when I still watch it, you know, because sometimes it's like, well, we can do a little better here, we can edit this part, but it's still emotional to me to see and to hear all of that, that we put it together. Absolutely, and you gave birth to a child, it really is exactly. your baby. And yeah. so what was the process, beginning, beginning from concept to the screening that we see? Well, it's, we filmed first the trial of Walter Doc Williams at the uh, Miami-Dade County Courthouse on Flagler, which was built in 1925. And so the opening shot is of the plaque that says Dade County Courthouse, 1925. And then we go into the courtroom where Al Capone was tried in the 1930s. And that courtroom has been completely restored. And in fact, it may have been the courtroom where Walter Doc Williams was sentenced to death. There's no record of which courtroom he was tried in. 
but it was certainly one of those courtrooms so, in that courthouse. So we're saying like a two-year project? Has this been like a two-year project for Just you? Just to get it together. Just to yeah, get it together. Yeah, and the together. pandemic yeah. got yeah. in the way, yeah. too. Yeah, that was the Absol other thing. Yeah. And, and, and something really amazing happened with this documentary. You've won all kinds of awards, and, and we can just put that on the screen, mm -hmm. what you've done. I mean, well, tell me about this. What? How did this happen, all these award-winning numbers here? It's time. Finalist, quarter, finalist, semi -selected. It's time. It's just time. I mean, we are raising the issues in this. You, you can see that we, on the screen, we've won eight best documentary awards. How many we have? Twelve more pending? Yeah, 12 we're, more we're pending. Finalists. Yeah, all over the country, people that see this movie embrace it because they're not South Floridians. And they don't have to deal with it. They don't have to confront it. Like we're asking the people in South Florida. It's so easy to sit back and go, what's wrong with Los Angeles? What's wrong with Miami? And so we've won all over the place, and yet we're not winning awards here in the state. People here, to a large part, we see resistance because people just find it more comfortable to look back through the lens of history and say, well, that was not on my watch. That happened 50 years ago. We're back live, Andres. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a very good point that it, it wasn't it didn't affect me, it didn't affect well, it me. What did happen in my town? Yeah, yeah it's not yeah, me. Not it's me. not my family, mm -hmm. and that's an easy out. So, but, so you're taking it local now. So you're taking right. the show on the road, right. so to speak. Yes. And it's coming to Aventura, and this is like next week, next yes. up and coming on the 18th. 18th. Where it's is it going to be? Thursday at the uh, Aventura Public Aventura Library. Aventura Regional Library, the Northeast Regional yeah. Library. And, and for, for a website, for more information about it, it's crimescenainc.org. No, 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 it's crime, it's crime history. Crime history. Crime history. I, I don't have my glasses on. So, no, go. thank God that, you know, you're listening. As <laughs> I can so see, I, I, you can, right. I can't see, you but can you can hear. Okay, okay yeah. that's good. We're, yeah. we're going to take our show on the road. Right. Yeah, crimehistoryinc.org. And yes. what, are, what, are the, what are your hopes for the film? Well, really, uh, the purpose, like I said before, the purpose is to bring awareness, to, bring, to, to open the eyes and to people to really um, do something, you know. And it's the arts, actually, that I think that has more effect because we can talk, we can write books, uh, we can give a speech, you know. But I think that when you, the people see the art there, the, uh, you get the emotion about it. And that resonates with you, you know, it stays with you. Um, so the purpose is to really bring this awareness for the family to get together, understand their community, get together, and see what we can do together, you know, to, to um, avoid all these incre incredible, horrific stories that we know. It, and, it's, I think it, and I think it transcends not only to the racism that's happening, but to all mm. cultures of all racism cultures. And, and through, through local through local and through our, our world. And this I think is, it's, it's a very, very important topic that we dissect. And I'm not sure, what are some of the reactions that you've had about the film so far? Oh, mostly very, very positive. Well, we've got yeah. partners now. The yeah. NAACP in Miami is our official partner. Um, we've been asked to screen for all kinds of community groups. A lot of them find themselves uh, like the Jewish Federation and other groups under similar problems, dealing with similar problems of prejudice, anti-Semitism. And it, 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 the thing that we're doing, we're looking for, is for people, no matter who you are, to look at this as something that they have a stake in, seeing the outcome, improving our justice system. And because they're a stakeholder in South Florida, they don't want to abandon this place. They want to fight for the place. And if they're willing to do that, then they fit within the umbrella of the Poison Garden. I mean, the Poison Garden was named after a Nathaniel Hawthorne story about Goodman Brown, you know, and the whole theme of the evil. Yeah, evil. Evil. Exactly. Well, man's mm -hmm. evil. Man's evil. Mm -hmm. exactly. But don't we all have that inside of, of us? Oh, we yes, do. we all yeah. do. But that doesn't mean we have to give in to it. That's right. right. We have the other. So side we can too. do greater good for we the world. Do, this is all better. about human rights. This right. is all about human rights. That's that's basically what it is. You know, that's supposed to be a norm of our behavior. If you want to see a better society, you know, it's supposed to be something that is so special. This is a normal for everybody. So, and that's that's what Poison Garden is about. Talking about two, we humanity. We have two grandchildren that live in this town, and we don't. You know, we don't want to see them going through, you know, difficult situations and prejudice, injustice. You know, that's that's. I think that everybody, that's what everybody wants. So what you're doing here is setting the seed 
get, making the doors open, giving it a voice, and to get involved. And I exactly. think that this is a this is this is one of many stops along the bus and truck of mm -hmm. of this film. The Poison Garden. The yes. Poison Garden. And next week in Aventura, mm -hmm. again, it's crimehistoryinc.org. I think I got the yes. uh, email, the <laughs> website address fine now. That's mm -hmm. right. And I want to thank you all for coming. And good luck to your film and you. any other projects that you have. Please feel free to come back on the show. Thank you for having me. So The Poison Garden. I'm Farrah Sachs. Next time on The Community Voice, we look forward to seeing you. And thank you for being my guest today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.